Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose A is a subset of real numbers and C is a real number. Then C is a cluster point of A, if and only if there is a sequence A1, A2, A3, and so on and so forth, of elements in A, such that the limit of AN is equal to C, and AN is not equal to C for all positive integers n. Now to start, our definition of a cluster point is as follows. Suppose A is a subset of real numbers and C is a real number. We say C is a cluster point of A if for every delta greater than zero, there exists an element x in A distinct from C, such that the absolute value of x minus C is less than delta. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. Now we're trying to prove a statement containing if and only. So let's start out by proving the forward. And to do that, Let's suppose C is a cluster point of A. And from here, we want to show that there is a sequence of elements in A that has these two properties. Now, here's how we're going to construct this sequence. If we consider an arbitrary positive integer n, well then 1 over n is a positive real number. And since C is a cluster point of A, this means that this statement is true for every delta greater than zero. So in particular, it must be true for one over n. So we're gonna take delta to be one over n. Well then, we have that there exists an element x in A distinct from C, such that as the value of x minus C is less than one over n. And we're going to denote x by A sub n. So, for each positive integer n, we can pick an element a sub n in a, such that a sub n is distinct from c, and as the value of a sub n minus c is less than 1 over n. And so, this gives us a sequence of elements in a. Now, we already know that our sequence satisfies this property, because that's how we've defined the sequence. All we have to do now is show that the limit of our sequence is equal to C. And we're going to show that this is true from the definition of the limit of a sequence. So from the definition of the limit of a sequence, this means the following. It means for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a positive integer k, such that for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, the absolute value of a n minus c is less than epsilon. So since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than zero, let's give ourselves an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. And from here, we want to find a positive integer which makes this statement turn out true. Now, it's nice if we know that the sequence 1 over n converges to zero. And this means the same thing we have here. It's just instead we have 1 over n minus 0. And since n is going to be a positive integer, I'm just going to rewrite absolute value of 1 over n minus 0 as 1 over n. OK, so we know that 1 over n converges to 0 which means we know that this statement is true. And this statement works for every positive real number. So in particular, it must work for the positive real number epsilon that we have here. So taking epsilon to be the epsilon we have here, we have that there is some positive integer that makes this statement turn out true. And I'll call that positive integer k. Now remember, our goal has been to find a positive integer which makes this statement turn out true. Well, our claim is that k is a positive integer that will make this statement turn out true. So we're going to take k to be the k we have here and proceed to prove that this statement is true. 
And since we're trying to prove a state about all positive integers greater than or equal to k, let's give ourselves an arbitrary positive integer greater than or equal to k. I'll call it n. And from here, we want to show that absolute value of a n minus c is less than epsilon. Now, based on the way we defined our sequence, we know that for all positive integers n, the absolute value of a n minus c is less than 1 over n. So since that statement works for all positive integers, then in particular, it must work for the positive integer n that we have here. Therefore, we have that absolute value of a n minus c is less than 1 over n. But then, we know that for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, 1 over n is less than epsilon. So since that statement works for all positive integers greater than or equal to k, then in particular, it must work for the positive integer n that we have here. And so, we have shown that absolute value of a n minus c is less than epsilon, which is exactly what we wanted to show. And so, we have proven this entire statement, which proves that the limit of a n is equal to c. And so, this proves the forward direction, because we have found a sequence of elements in a such that the limit of that sequence is equal to c, that's what we have here, and a n is not equal to c for all positive integers n. That is what we have right here. So now let's prove the converse. Now in the proof of the converse, we are assuming that there is a sequence a n in a such that the limit of that sequence is equal to c and a n is not equal to c for all positive integers n. And the whole goal from here is to show that C is a cluster point of A. And by definition, this means we want to show for every delta greater than zero, there exists an element X in A distinct from C, such that acid value of X minus C is less than delta. So since we're trying to prove a statement about every delta greater than zero, let's give ourselves an arbitrary delta greater than zero. From here, we want to show that this is true. Well, since we know that our sequence converges to C, we know that this means that this is true. And this statement works for every positive real number. So in particular, it must work for the positive real number delta. So taking epsilon to be delta, we have that there is some positive integer k, such that for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, the absolute value of a n minus C is less than delta. Now remember, our goal is to find an element in A such that this is true. Well, we can show that A sub K is an element in A such that this is true. So let's take X to be A sub K. From here, we want to verify that A sub K is an element of A, A sub K is distinct from C, and the absolute value of A sub K minus C is less than delta. Well, those three facts don't take much work to verify. Since this is a sequence of elements in A, of course, A sub K is an element of A. And by our second fact of this sequence, every element in the sequence is distinct from C, and therefore, A sub K must be distinct from C. And then, since this statement works for every positive integer greater than or equal to K, in particular, it must work for K. So, we have that the absolute value of a sub k minus c is less than delta. So, all three requirements are satisfied, which means we have found an element in a such that this is true. And so, this proves that c is a cluster point of a. And so, that proves the converse. Because we've proven both the forward and the converse, we have proven this entire statement. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.